All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Fire Emblem Blazing Sword. So after um, saving Natalie, we now have Dorcas on our side, and we keep moving towards, uh, um, not Ostia, towards Kaelin. And Zane's back with me. I'm back. In black. I'm actually wearing blue and blue-black shorts. Ah. <laughs> I don't know why that's relevant. I just felt I well, just felt the need to say your, your avatar's arm is black, and black is the way to go. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's the it's the color of uh, you know OCs for twenty uh, one year old man children like myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, you know it. Uh, I I don't even know. I don't know Beyond anymore. The <laughs> yeah. Let's another uh, demonstration as to why a Blazing Sword has a boner for um, environmental thingamajigs. Oh yeah, I forgot. I got. I forgot how much this game abuses forest tiles. Mm. <laughs> it's actually. Uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to this part because of a thing that happens. Yep. Uh, <laughs> a certain somebody. Lysia at last. It's been a long time. Tomorrow we'll dine on a feast of Lysia's finest foods. And the mistress of the inn at the crossing is said to be a beauty. Ah, yes. Food and love. No better way to restore a man's soul. Yeah, but if that mistress is Anna, you got to pay a hefty coin for it. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm all out of luck. I, 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 I don't think I have enough HP for this. I, I may have to, I may have to work on my pronunciation, you know, because uh, HP and not HP. Mm. I, I'm surprised you did not react stronger to that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, people probably give you shit for it, for it all the time. Oh, people give me shit mostly just for Monster Hunter. <laughs> people, people give, people will will spare no expense to give you shit. <laughs> That's what I was supposed to give anyone shit. <laughs> uh, well, this is the internet we're talking about. Yeah. The I'm, moment you I'm, so I'm much... Not, I'm not here because I want to be loved. I'm here just because I want to hang out with my boy, my buddy. Yeah. We, uh, you go yeah. onto the internet expecting love, you get pelted with hate comments. <laughs> yeah. That's how the internet works. Yeah, but when you do get the occasional people actually being nice and doing stuff like that, it's, it's worth it. Or, or finding people that who you thought would be jerks, but actually turned out to be nice. <laughs> Zerk Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at first we had a misunderstanding because of the whole. Um, yeah, we, at first we had a misunderstanding because of the whole Nintendo E3 thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do distinctly remember, you know, uh, <laughs> writing a Twitter thing. Up oh, and here it comes. There she is, Sarah. La 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 la. That's a lot of laws. That is a lot of laws. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I have my misgivings with Mangs, but I'll, 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 I'll take a joke from him if I think it's funny, and I think that joke is funny. Yeah. Well, this because Sarah is, she's something else, people like. How do we best put it? Like, you know uh, how basically, characters like Clarine, Severa, stuff like that are really full of themselves, think they're the best? Jack that up to 20,000 with Severa. Uh, with, um, Severa. Sorry, no, I'm... Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Sarah. Honestly. She's like the most self-absorbed, like, I'm the greatest person in the world person ever. I mean, she's not necessarily a bitch, but she's just so like, oh yes, I'm the greatest thing ever. It's me who's the reason this army's doing well. And the fact that I'm here is why we're all succeeding. Honestly, why should I be positive to the battle? I'm the greatest person ever. You should all <laughs> bow at my feet. God! Yes, yeah, Sarah should be thankful she's such a useful unit, because otherwise, otherwise there would be no reason to use her whatsoever. <laughs> no, Sarah, Sarah is um, all happy. Then she's Priscilla. She goes, fuck! <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I use two healers, you know, for this game because, you know, you can't go wrong with an extra healer. I tend to use two healers per farming game as well. Yeah. Um, always, always, you know, one one infantry healer and one mounted healer, even though the mounted healers almost always tend to be better. Yeah, most of the time, yeah, pretty much. But um, for it's this like, um, this case, I well, Sarah comes in first, so you're going to use her naturally. But yeah. because of Lucius, I do tend to bench her. I, I just prefer Pris um, Priscilla, but I've used Sarah for quite a few times. I gotta be honest, I never used Lucius in my first playthrough. Like, I tried to, but, you know, if I needed a magic user, Kanas just kind of fulfilled all the roles and then some. Well, and then... Uh, in this game especially, because Kanas is such a niche, because of being a dark mage. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, 
Kanas has has the ability to use the Lunatome, which you kind of need in order to beat the final boss of this game. Hey, I've beat that final boss plenty of times without it. Eh, well, I I mean, I I guess you could do it. It's just you know, it just takes. You're gonna while. make just gonna make things harder for yourself. All right, and we get tutorial crap. Yeah, it's just it's just showing us how magic units work and healers and all that jazz. And we're gonna rec and we're gonna recruit these guys. So anyway, um, let's talk about them one by one. Let's first talk about Sarah. Um. As a healer, she comes in, she's got a lot of utility and stuff, but she can be outdone by Lucius once he promotes. But for a while, she will be useful. But be aware, her defense is abysmal. Like, she will die in one hit. Roughly. <laughs> like, Roughly. she's got a terrible defense base, bad defense growth. But she, again, she's got high evasion, so that's fine. But she cannot take a hit at all. It is to be expected of, um, pr um, you know, clerics and stuff, but Sarah especially. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then we have Urk, who is okay, I guess. He's I didn't... incredibly balanced. Like you can't. He's... Like if you don't use Urk, you're not missing out. If you use Urk, that's fine. His yeah. um, the only thing he kind of does well in is speed. But other units like Lucius, Pent, and Canis event are just overall better. But he's still a mm -hmm. fine choice. Like you can't really go wrong with Urk. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't bother using him. I I used Nino for the end game and mm -hmm. and. And, and I was glad I did, for the most part. Well, I've got to use Nino because of the whole stipulation I'm stuck with now. You, you, you have to use Nino because you have to have, you know, you have to prove that that Unit X is useful even though they don't seem like it. Well, yeah. Well, I can just... It's, half the time it is luck, but I do the best to make every unit um, as useful as possible. I've already done it with Lin, and I've got to do it with Nino. Yep. I mean, if I, to be fair, if I can get away with it with Gwendolyn and Sophia, this game is no problem. Yeah, because Neo know, is not nearly as bad as those two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I have not played Binding Blade in depth, but there's a part of me that really wants to use Gwendolyn. <laughs> hey, and you I know, keep. She has the most balanced growth rate, so she might be kind of like built like a hero by the end. Just got to deal with a lot of shit. Can, can I? Can I just say that I really love Sarah's smiling sprite because it, it's. <laughs> It's that, you know, it, she just looks so fucking douchey in it. Yeah. I, I don't know why. So it's she like, has it's a shit-eating grin. It's, it's, it's kind of like uh, Claire's smiling, uh, smiling portrait in Echoes. It's like, it's, it's, she's just so, she's just so... It's the she's posh just smile. so full of herself. Yeah, it's the posh smile. <laughs> it's great. Yo, yeah, well, uh, Claire's one, like, ironic, I thought Claire was going to be a real bitch. Are you bitch. Lewis? Indeed, I am Lewis. Oh yeah, speaking of Ark... I, bet, I think the best way to sum up Urk is he's kind of like the Sorin of this game. He's like, oh god, why do I get dragged into this shit? Uh, I I wouldn't say he's similar to Sorin in terms of you know unit potential or or no. character. Okay, fair like enough. Like he's, I mean he's he's got some traits of Sorin of like you know I'm I'm kind of detached from everything, but like <laughs> you know I I mean I played I was playing Path of Radiance not too long ago and like Sorn is such a raging douche in that game. He is a, he is you a know, massive douche in that game. Like especially in the early game, you know. And and he never he never really grows out of that. He does his support. And Radiant Dawn he there's does. There's a part of me that's a little disappointed. And somehow I missed that. That nice. 87. Um 87. Yeah, missed the and I only got one. Oh, that he got so screwed that time. The blazing uh, luck ran out. I, the blazing luck ran out. We need to, we need to get the hashtag circulating in order to get it back. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, Soren, you definitely notice in Radiant Dawn he does li liven up a lot. Um, I it's been it's been a while since I've played Radiant Dawn. I kind of want to though. It's been a while with me, like, but that's because every time I do play Radiant Dawn, I need to take like a five month break because the experience is so taxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't play Fire Emblem for like a month afterward. <laughs> Because of how long that game is. Well, some people can. Uh, I can't. I'm just like, ugh, give me a fucking break, please. I, rem I remember... Well, I mean, I remember when I was younger, I would do consecutive playthroughs of Radiant Dawn, but I was playing on easy mode, so... Mm. So it's, it's you know, it's not quite as much of a strenuous task. I mean, I could play... F actually, I think the Fire Emblem game that I find easiest to play through casually is Awakening. Well, yeah, but that's because Awakening, you know, it was designed for the casual market. And it succeeded! You know? <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> succeeded... You know, in in the best way possible, yeah. or the worst, depending on which side of the fan base you're on. I'm on the side that says Awakening, despite its flaws, Ugh. is still a really good game and done wonders for the series. I'm ever so grateful that it exists. Again, I'm sorry, no Awakening, no Echoes. 
You still there? I think. Hmm? I think sorry, you, <laughs> did something? Uh, did something happen? Yeah, it's, it's Skype. Um, we're using Skype to record this, and and it has a bad habit of cutting out at inopportune times, and I I miss whatever Lewis is saying. Okay, I was saying like um, even though some people obviously don't like awakening, I'm grateful because if you think about it, if there was no awakening, there'd be no echoes. There'd be no echoes, and there there'd be no opportunities for the series to have to quote unquote redeem itself. itself. From yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. That is what we call an overreaction. Yep. Overreaction, schmaction. The only indeed. time, the only time I'm going to be like the series needs to redeem itself was when we get a glitchy, bug-filled, um, unbalanced mess of a game like a uh, Fire Emblem game. Like we, when we get the Sonic 06 of Fire Emblem. <laughs> and we're, we're and say what you want about Awakening and Fates, they are not that. You yeah, know? they're not. They are not Sonic <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Nothing. I don't think anything's going to ever get that bad. <laughs> yeah. It's like you know, it's it's kind of like uh, Fire Emblem is comparable to. Uh, uh, Awakening is comparable to Metallica's Black album, album, you know, divisive, but, you know, there there is at least something to it, you know, even the hardest of critics could say, you know, we have yet to get, like, the Saint Anger or Lulu of the Fire Emblem series. Yeah. As far as, I, as, far as I'm concerned. I think concerned. every Fire Emblem game is at the least well-constructed, I mean, from a, like, technical standpoint, they're all good games. Yeah, that, like, they're, they're, they're well put together enough, you know, in, in the ways that matter, I'd yeah. say. Oh, yeah, but, definitely. Just some have personal so, preferences, anyways. and some fail in some areas, and some do well in some areas. Yeah. Like, like every game, you can't expect perfection every time around. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, and even if you did get perfection, like with this game, like this, I, I'd argue Blazing Sword is probably the most solid of the Fire Emblem games in just about every way, but I can't really think of anything this game does that stands out, to me at least. That's one thing people tend to have problems with. Like, some people think it's just very competently built, but there's nothing there, like, either really good or really bad to make it stand out. Which I totally get. I don't know. I mean, there, there are some things, like, uh, when Zephyl shows up and you have the whole deal with him, I think that stuff is really good, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not necessarily amazing. Yeah, and also there's um, Hector. <laughs> yeah. We well, know everyone seems to love. Because mm -hmm. Seven is in a weird camp when it comes to opinions of the game from what I've seen. Some people have a lot of nostalgia value towards it, because, you know, it was the first Final game in the West. Some people mm. see it as really solid. A lot, there are quite a few though that see it as overrated. Sorry, I was gonna, I was saying again the Skype thing. There are some some people think it's um like some people have a lot of nostalgia. Some people think it's just over really good. Some people think it's overrated though. I've seen quite mm. a few opinions saying Fire Emblem Seven is I overrated. I don't know if I would call it overrated necessarily. It's just you know. It didn't really grab me personally, and yeah, that's fair enough. Mm. Um, but I think if that, yeah, this and Path of Radiance are the closest to perfect Fire Emblem games, which ironically are my two favorite. Yeah, well, I mean, I I mean, Path of Radiance has I have my issues with Path of Radiance, like it's a slow to play game, and you know, and and honestly, it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of in a similar camp where it just it just kind of does everything well, but doesn't do anything. Like outstanding for the yeah. for the most part. You know, I I I don't like Radiant Dawn has its issues, but you know the what stuff in that well, game that's yeah. really good is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I've I've, I've I've always stand by this statement with Radiant Dawn. When Radiant Dawn's bad, it's terrible. When it's great, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, Arkham and, actually makes for a very good early game boss killer because most bosses have shit resistance. Yeah. So he can squash he can squash this boss like a bug. Oh wait. <laughs> Actually, a fun little trivia while Lin has the Manikati pulled out. Um, Lin's uh, two exclusive swords in this game have an interesting naming theme. The Manikati translates in some language that I am not certain of off the top of my head. Um, it translates to Moon Sword, uh -huh. and of course, uh, Lin soul gets this, the Soul sun Kati. Yeah, yeah, so the Sun Sword. So the Moon Sword and the Sun Sword. That is yeah, that's yeah. interesting. You learn, you learn stuff here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am the mythology buff between the two of us, so I'm, I'm mostly here to just explain um, all the all little the tidbits. <laughs> yeah, all the tidbits and mythological references. Like um, uh, another thing is that the uh, the eight heroes of the Alib games um, mm -hmm. are all named after uh, characters from 
the medieval poem, poem The Song of Roland. You know, uh-huh. uh, oh, yeah, one of them's called Roland. Yeah, because one of them's called Roland. Um, and there's uh, another interesting thing when we get to Nurgle and his name and some symbolism with his name and his uh, the name of his personal weapon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, I... And already, um, <laughs> Sane is trying to hit on Sarah. She is loving it. Look at that smile. Yeah. Yep. Uh, of course, I mean, I mean, I don't think Sarah would be, you know, would be interested in a guy like Sane. Mm. You know, he'd, he'd have to be insane to think he has a chance, but I've already made that joke. To be fair, if Sane was in the other Fire Emblem games, because he's a knight and I, I expect he has a bit of money, Shot, he would, uh, Shot, it would love him. <laughs> well... Because he would totally be into her, and she'd just be like, be able to like pit, po- pick, pit pocket him like nobody's business. <laughs> it's it's all the more reason to see like interactions between characters of of older Fire Emblem games and newer Fire Emblem games. Well, we did which, have warriors, but <laughs> well, we did have it. Like, I, <laughs> there's still a chance. This DLC is still a thing. DLC is still I, a thing. Any mention of Fire Emblem Warriors is going to get me on a, a massive, massive angry rant. And, and not for the reasons you think. Not because I'm I'm disappointed that about the game's roster, because I am, but because I really want to punch the people who are trying to complain about it. Because uh, I, I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> I think the other I think complaining is I think obviously it's it, there is stuff to get salty about, but I do think people have gone kind of overboard. With the complaining. <laughs> Zerk Monster Hunter. <laughs> uh, I, I, um, but Zerk- one thing that's actually surprised me so much about Warriors is I didn't expect it. The gameplay looks really damn good. Huh. Like, like the way they're incorporating the mechanics and even the way Xander played, I was like, fuck, that looks really good. Mm, interesting. And I did not expect that because I kind of wanted to play the game just for the roster. But now I'm looking at the gameplay and I'm like, you know what? That looks like a really good Warriors game. Well, I mean, Hyrule Warriors, like, I love Hyrule Warriors. Oh, but that it's is gameplay- wonderful. Like its gameplay was was very solid, but there's you know it's it's also just a little bit unpolished in places. Like th- like half the fun of Hyrule Warriors is just kind of you know futzing around with it. But yeah. um, but it, it you know it, you're saying that like uh, Fe Warriors is going to be um, is going to be you know even more interesting gameplay. Yeah, they're, they're, I think the main focus of this game they're not really focusing so much on the roster, more incorporating Fire Emblem mechanics into the Dynasty Warriors type gameplay. And so far it looks to be working, which I will admit is kind of cool. But yeah. the main reason we'd want to play a Warriors game Fire Emblem is to play as the roster. Yeah, and and we complete. Speaking of uh, focus, we completely ignored Lundgren there. Yeah, well, there's not much to talk about him. He's a douchebag. <laughs> there, there's his story. Yeah, I know. Lund- Lundgren is kind of a forgettable villain, honestly. But like, as a tutorial villain, he's fine. Yeah, he does a fine job. But he's not wor- he's not the type of villain which is not worthy of his own game. So explain Awakening and Fates because they're just as bad. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you lied to me. Th- this uh, this video you said was just going to be chapter five, but we're going into chapter six now. I told you beforehand it was two parts. <laughs> well, yeah, but a part does not necessarily mean that. You know, you know yeah, I think of a part as just one chapter per episode, but... Well, here we are. We're in the next chapter, chapter six. Chapter six. Well, like I and said, um, because Lin's campaign is kind of short, some of them get spliced together. Like, I will tell you right now, I do not think Blazing Sword will be as long as Binding Blade, because not only do we have the two routes to explore, but some of the chapters I had to do in two parts because they were fucking long. Well, if, unless you want to show off Elwood's story, which, you know, there's not really a whole lot of point to doing that, because... Elliewood's story is basically just kind of like Hector's story, except it focuses on Elliewood, and it's just slightly shorter. Yeah, well, Hector's campaign I do plan to do a, hopefully a full playthrough for, but the main dip- difference is 100%, aside from Lynn and Elliewood, completely different team. So no two units are the same, except for the Lords. Mm. Which I think will be I interesting. We'll be able to wait to show off all the characters. So That's also why I'm specifically right, and then not... we're in this village, yeah. and... This is where we are. And stuff actually, happens. <laughs> yeah, the ending of this part's kind of interesting because that's when we get to see like um, how the nomad clans are viewed by um, like other other um, people in Lys- 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 Lysia and stuff. Like, because well, uh, usually I didn't notice it, but when I was recording the first, I was like, oh, that's actually kind of interesting stuff. What? What is it? Um, it's like um, because um, the Marquis or whatever it's called, he um, like um, I can't remember what happened exactly, but. I think either he had a thing for Lin's mom, but he, she went off with the nomad. He had. A, are you talk? Are you talking about Lin's dad? Yeah, and then he had. He now has a massive, rate a hatred towards all nomadic people. So he completely like, um, for, like 
um, r- r- um, he s- prevents uh, Lin from getting any help. Oh, yeah, the, the marquee in this chapter, yeah. Yeah, and also, I, I, when Raph finds a... out, Raph's like, you know what, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Wrath is all like, magnificent, but now feel my unbridled wrath. What is he, Rick to, uh, Raph to Belmont? <laughs> Raph to Belmont. <laughs> also, raining. yeah, that one line of dialogue is more than Raph says throughout the entire game. Uh, well, I mean, I I don't remember using Wrath at all. Like, no, again, I, to be fair, no don't really to. speak. I wanted to, because, like, I I like Bow Knight characters. I, mm-hmm. You know, they I again, they have they have a lot of utility, you know, particularly particularly in the in the GBA games. Yeah. Binding Blade Nomads are amazing. And this guy said, prepare yourself. I prepare guess, yourself. I, guess, <laughs> I fight for my friends. Or not. Yeah. I fight for my friends, but, and for some reason, it took me ages to get me an Effie Heroes. Still don't get that. I, I guess they were saving it as their trump card, but... Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm sorry, we're I, gonna put fucking Roy and Lynn at the beginning, where's Ike? Especially because you showed him off in the trailer and he came first in the male character voting polls. Anyway. I, mean, I, I guess it was just kind of a failsafe, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, I don't play I don't play Heroes anymore because that game got openly hostile towards free-to-play players, and well, I, don't, I just don't have the money to spend on it. That's true. Not only did that happen to me, I've noticed I've been getting really, really crappy summons, except... My most recent summon, I got a five-star Sonic so that was cool. But also, Epi Heroes, I've got to the point where unless you have a full team of maxed out five stars, you can't progress. Oh yeah, no, that that's part of what I was saying was that you know unless you have the means to summon you know hero after hero after hero, unless you're Phoenix Master One and you can spend all your YouTube ad revenue getting a million different five stars, you know, yeah. for, for you skill and the game will literally won't let you won't let you progress. Yeah, you you cannot beat some of those challenges. And even then, like, you need specific like last, five stars. Yeah, the the last uh, map in the Lunatic of uh, the maps from uh, when Celica got introduced, like they are fucking obnoxious. Oh like, yeah, they're ridiculous. You know, you know, and it's like you know, even if I got Cam, uh, Camus from from uh, that recent Grand Hero battle, like I I would have, you know, I still don't think I would have won. Do you know who you know, the next Grand Hero is? Uh, it's Berkut. Berkut, yeah. Bakut is on his way. And that's good. Bakut's really jumping up in the popularity, and I'm glad he is. He's the best thing to come out of Echoes, character-wise. Oh, yeah. Love yeah. him. He's, he's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is Raph. Raph is the only nomad in this game. Um, Raph yeah. is interesting because he it, he starts out definitely stronger than Will and stuff, and he's like his growth rates and like speed and strength were good. Problem is, he disappears for a good chunk of the game and then comes back under-leveled. I know. Oh. Like that's that's the issue with Wrath is that by the time you get him back he's like level seven and you're like like two thirds through the game already and it's like why you know it's like I want to use a nomad trooper because you know they have they have so much usefulness but but I can't because you know he you're gone for so long. Yeah. To be fair, in Lin's part he's really damn good. He's definitely better than Will. Well, in Lin's part, he's like he's like borderline Jagan status. You know, he's he's the closest thing you get to a Jagan in this in this uh, campaign. Yeah, but last time I checked, especially when I played Jagan, Shadow Dragon, Jagan sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean Jagan archetype of yeah, you know, yeah. like overpowered Frederick. characters. Yeah, like Frederick or Seth. Yeah. You know, but but I mean, uh, Frederick and Seth are fall more into the category of the Oife, which is the the Jagan archetype that can still be useful later on Very down much the like, yeah. road. Like Titania. You know, yeah, you know, you have your, your pure Jagans, which are the characters that you get that, you know, like Jagan and Gunter uh, and Marcus from FE6. Then you have the Oifes, like uh, uh, Seth, Seth, Frederick, Frederick uh, Titania. Soth, uh, Soth to some extent. And then you have what I like to refer to as the Nylas, which are the early game already promoted units that that are already promoted, but are amazing for most of the game, like Nyla and Camilla. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Fates was more all kind of like all the um, royals were really good. Mo- all right, most of the royals are really good. I mean, well, I mean, the, all of the royals in Conquest are mounted units, so they have some utility. Yeah. Well, the birthright, um, you know, actually, only one of the royals in birthright was a pre promote, but Roma was disgusting. I think he's cut out again. God damn it. What goddammit? I said I thought you. I think he's cut out again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was gonna I say. Uh, I, 
You know what? We need to we need to get a Discord. Yeah, I, I need to I need to make use of my Discord because like I can't I can't have this where where I'm I'm missing what you're saying for long stretches of time and then have you have to repeat yourself. Ah, uh, don't worry. It's only <laughs> going to be for this part. It's only for these two parts. Yeah. So next, all right. This is our thief, Matthew. Uh, Matthew, very much like a thief. Great speed, good HP growth. Um, very useful for picking lots high evasion. His strength isn't very good, so... And Thieves, they can promote this game, but it's really late, so he's not the most useful person to use, but he's good for, like, getting chests. Matthew's actually my favorite Thief in Fire Emblem. I really I, like Matthew. Matthew is one of the better characters in this game, which which kind of makes me sad, because I, I hate Thief characters in Fire Emblem normally. Okay. Like, I, I just... I do not like Thieves at all, because they're almost never worth using in battle. They... You know they're hard. They're hard to use, and they they just kind of end up taking space if you want to get treasures. You yeah. know, half the time. You yeah, I, I totally get that. I mean, there there are some thieves that I like. Like uh, I really like Volk in Path of Radiance. And so um, from Radiant Dawn. Uh, so not as much. You know, <laughs> even in Radiant Dawn, like like he's good in Radiant Dawn, but um, <laughs> the the issue is that he's kind of weird and hard to train, you know, like most of the Dawn Brigade units. Um, yeah, true. What and about Kolm I and, um, Sacred Stones? I really like Kolm. Kolm, I... I like, but I find that he, you know, but that, but, I mean, Sacred Stones, it's kind of weird because of, you know, you can you, you can make use of the grinding to, you know, so thieves are just kind of more easy to use in general. Yeah, that's true. So, that's, that's that. Um... And then the other thief I really like is uh, Gaius, because uh, Thieves in Awakening, once they promote into assassins in that game, they have bow utility, and I find that any unit that has bow, bow utility in addition to regular melee weapons is always really, really useful. Mm -hmm. For me, at least. Okay, fair enough. I was never huge on Gaius. I actually kind of think he's an overrated character. But, I mean, I've I used mean, him and he's that. good, but I'm not particularly huge on Gaius, just generally. Nothing against him massively, just was never that huge on him. Um, so yeah, in this chapter we've got to activate switches, and this kind of to teach you all the, the whole thief mechanic as well as chapters with more like more strange objectives. So it's a little uncanny of a chapter, but it's 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 cool things considered. Yeah, I mean this this is this is a little bit of a weird layout for like normal chapters because you have um, you have the the switches that you need to hit. Yeah, your Florina is doing better than she probably should be like uh, I'm, I'm I the, the issue I always have with Pegasus Knight characters is that they always seem to have this really bad habit of just never being able to get kills no matter because, what for, yeah well most because, starting because out they, they tend to have shitty strength yeah they, they tend to have very not very good strength I think it does vary on game to game but generally yeah that is the issue but I always find that once you get them around like ten level ten upwards, especially when they promote, that's when they start wrecking all kinds of shit. Mm, yeah, they they get better as they go on. It's just that they're they're always such a pain to train, you know. And sometimes and sometimes Pegasus Knights are just plain not worth it. Like you know, Marcy in Path of Radiance, I would argue there's no real point to using her because you can use Tanith, and Tanith has the ability to call in reinforcements, and that is such a useful ability. Like, why would you give that up for Marcia? Uh, you know. Probably you want to use Marcia. Uh, oh, you actually probably want to use Marcia earlier on, especially for like the boat maps and the desert maps. I mean, like, well, some of that, yeah, but then, at the same again, time, Jill. I mean, you get Jill in that chapter, and you know, Wyvern. Jill is awesome in that game, especially because she has the Goose Brand, which I, until I recently played, I didn't realize she had. Like, <laughs> oh fuck! No wonder she's so good. Yeah. You know, well, take I mean, off the damage from the Goose units. Yeah. I mean, she's useful in in that one chapter. It's you. Know, I mean, so, some people have. Uh, the, you know, some people take issue with the way Jill joins your party in Path of Radiance. It's like, yeah, on the one hand, I, I yeah, I see that. It's kind of a stupid reason as to why she joins. But at the same time, she's such a good unit. Like, why are you complaining? Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a, a little forced, but I kind of get it. Like, again, she's, to you, she's the lesser of two evils. Mm, yeah. Like, there's there's the, so. there's the enemy team, but then there's the Lagoos, and I, I'm racist towards them. It's it's just it's just weird that she you know she stays around after that you know mm. for so long. I mean yeah, but it does work. It, it does great for her character. Mm, I guess so. I mean Jill Jill is one of the better developed characters in Path of Radiance, especially for a secondary character. Mm, yeah, I, I, I Jill's my favorite Wyvern Knight. 
I Jill would Jill would be my favorite Wyvern Knight if her strength was better in Radiant Dawn. Like uh, like she's good in Radiant Dawn. It's just that you know, ha. Har. <laughs> Well, funny enough, all... with Ha, with me, Ha always starts better, but I find that by the time Jill becomes third tier, she outclasses her. Also, Jill's rare for being a Wyvern Knight, aside from Camilla, but she's a Malik Knight, for being a Wyvern Knight with actually really good resistance. Well, not really good, but good resistance. I, I never really paid attention to Jill's resistance stat all that much. Like, I mean, the only the only issue with Jill is that she's, you know, she's so piss weak at the start of that game that she's, yeah. she's kind of a pain to raise. True, but she is kind of she is one of the more useful Dawn Brigade units, especially because yeah. she's a flyer. Mm. I mean, she and Nolan are are the best are the best axe users in that part of the game. So, pretty. I suppose they're like the only axe users. Uh, I, unless you count Toronio. Well, well, Tor- Toronto. I does Toronto have axe when he when he starts as a general? Cause, well, yeah, yeah, because generals always have uh, access to axes. I yeah, think. it's it's um it's generals have a- access to axes and then they get swords when they become marshals. Or oh, unless they start as a sword like like Meg does. But that's <laughs> such a rare class. Well, yeah, Meg's the only sword knight in that game, and you know she's unless you count a... the black knight. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I mean the black the black knight, I. Actually, I, I am retracting that sentence because saying that the Black Knight does not count is 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 kind of a bad thing to say around you. <laughs> it's fine. Well, Black Knight doesn't count because he's technically a boss, even though you do get to use him in certain chapters. I, that's it's actually kind of a cool thing that I almost wish more Fire Emblem games did with of the uh, of uh, you know last players bad guys or having, the bosses. Yeah, being allowed to play as bad guys in like a, a very specific scenario. Wouldn't, I, don't, I know Garen isn't a great villain, but I would have loved one chapter of Conquest so I could actually use him as a unit. Oh, that would that would actually be really cool. Yeah. Just just with that fucking, that giant fuck-off axe. Yeah, the bulwark. Yeah. Or, like, mm. trying to think of, like, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> what if there's one fire, what if you could play as a field? Oh, I'd love Ooh, to do that. that. Well, you can do it in the trial maps, but you, you have to play through Binding Blade a, a billion times, and it's like, nope. <laughs> Uh, or like, what if I don't know? Maybe you could get Fernando or Bakut on your side, or oh, R- Rudolph. Oh, that oh, that would be awesome. But but then you'd have like a million Cavaliers, and <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, Echis is already limited on its classes. But uh, but like that game, you know, you already get like s- like five or six Cavaliers normally, and you, you only know, need one. Yeah, you you really only need Matilda. Yeah, <laughs> you you only need Matilda for like as as, as was well, many Cavalier. No, as your only unit. <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't say that because M- Matilda, Matilda is not necessarily great at tanking hits. I find, but, Says but you. She's, well, I, I mean, it all vary. It all de- varies. De- yeah, obviously. depending. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you if your enemy has the fucking numbing claws weapon, then nobody oh, yeah. takes hits. Good. That's true. It's, it's like, I freaking hate I freaking hate numbing claws and echoes so yeah, much. Yeah, but aren't they usually aren't those enemies usually the ones that die in one hit as well? Uh, there, well, here's the thing, is that, um, like, uh, you know, the enemies that have numbing claws are the zombie enemies, and yeah, they, they're not particularly sturdy, but those enemies have such a truckload of HP for some unexplained reason that they can take hit, that I find they take hits much, much better than you expect them to. Oh yeah, those ones do. And, yeah. and if you you have a unit that gets hit num- with numbing claws and is, is nearby, you know, and has like two other enemies nearby, then mm-hmm. that unit is dead because yeah. because that's that's how freaking stupid the numbing claws are because they take you know they do so much goddamn damage and they cause you to they cause your unit to be unable to dodge attacks. Yeah, yeah very it's, true. It's, it's and Lin so got HP up, and Dorcas kills the boss. Good for him. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see what you mean. But I did notice some of the enemies, like the ones that had the really high attack, they only had like 15 HP, those rare enemies. Yeah. Um, but um, what I was saying about tanking, for some reason, Matilda, she was amazing at tanking gargoyles because they couldn't, um, they, could, they weren't fast enough to double her. Well, gargoyles, gargoyles like, don't have a, a very high strength stat, so no, that's they not have, really surprising. They have fuck off speed. Yeah. Ah, and there's so, so many I- of them. You've done well. What a performance! God, he looks. So, he looks like he's constipated. Look at his <laughs> eyes. It's the eyes. They do it not lie. It's the eyes. Oops, excuse me. <clears throat> oh, it's you. You're Marcus Kylens. Leave us, Wrath. I would speak to this girl. Hmm. <laughs> Was that I, yes or I no? Actually, 
I actually really like this scene. This is one of the scenes in uh, in this game that that stood out to me. Oh yeah, it's when we get to see more of like the moral gray of Fire Emblem. Not all the like, you know everyone has their own thing in Majigs. Yeah. But but I but but it's not just that. I I just really like the the interaction between this guy and Wrath at the end of the scene. Oh uh, yeah. I, 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 I always like things where um, where uh, a, a person acts like an ass and then another person, you know, tells them off and screws them over for it. You know, so, kind of like what happens with Brakut where he has a temper tantrum? Sort of. Uh, I <laughs> I gotta be honest, I, I don't remember Echo's... <laughs> I, I've kind of forgotten the large chunks of Echo's story, to no, be it's honest. Like the, the, more, the more I play Act 6, the more it, um, it pushes Echo's out of my grey matter. <laughs> the more you play Act Six, the more you forget the story because you're because you're so fucking focused on on beating Thames Labyrinth. Yeah, but I, I, I was gonna so say Echoes is, a, Echoes is a game I find it peaks really early on and then just kind of nose dives. And, I, and it's it's weird because like is it is it just because like these mechanics are so new or is it because the first third of the game is genuinely better designed? Than I think the, the first third of the game is overall better designed because there's a better. There's a better sense of map variety. Well, kind of. There's a better. The the they're better laid out with enemies because the, the last half of the game they get obnoxious with like the cantors and oh, how cramped the maps get and how much they expect you to tank. Yeah. Every. Yeah. Like so many of those levels are so freaking claustrophobic. Yeah. You know, especially that. Especially the last battle with Duma. You know. Every. You know. It's. It's. Like but that. It's so. There's no room to maneuver in that that area but to, to give it credit that's one fire and boss battle that was legitimately hard and i'm glad for it because most of them are easy yeah i know it's like fire emblem's track record with boss with final bosses is so so hit or miss yeah like echoes was good puff radiance and radiant dawn were good um seven was good yeah Ever, um every other game was kind of crappy yeah. I, I don't know about four though i haven't played i've finished that yet Oh, you're you're still playing it. I was gonna ask how how is uh, how is the fight with Julius? Uh, it, well, I've seen I've seen gameplay of it, and it doesn't look all that special. It, yeah, it well, looks like it, it looks like a really it looks like an especially kind of lame final battle. In all honesty, yeah, like the, I think the dragon boss is one of the best because that one you got, you got to take a whole team to take him down. This this the, the this game's final boss is friggin' difficult. I was not expecting it to be quite so hard on my first playthrough. Yeah. I mean, but half I don't... the time, most of the Fire Emblem bosses that are like um, final bosses, they tend to go down really easily. Like the demon in um, Sacred Stones goes down really easily. The demon dragon in um, Six goes down really easily. The, um, I, I every did, I awakening did... boss is a joke. I, Iden is such a pathetic final boss because she, you know, she, you know, she requires like maybe two hits with the binding blade. The ironic part is, if you don't use the binding blade, she actually takes a while to take down. But the binding blade is like ultra effective against her. I know it's 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 the four times effective on Gyarados thing. Yeah, it's like it's like she's a Gyarados and you you just hit her with thunder or zap cannon. That's funny because I've actually been uh, playing through Pokemon Emerald and I've I've named I've nicknamed all the members of my team after uh, FE6 characters. Oh, funny. So, so I so I have a Blaziken named Roy, a Gardevoir named Lilina, uh -huh. a, a Minectric named Sue, an Agron named Zephyr, a Walrein named Yoder. And I'm going to be naming. Uh, I'm going to be training a Salamence and naming it either Fa or Aiden. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> that that that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I did that for a uh, Black Two run. I had a Superior I called Ha, uh, yeah. Excadrill I called Kiel, a uh, Galvantula I called Iliana. Yeah. Uh, what were the other Pokemon I had? Shit, because it was. I remember it was Gen Five. Oh, I had a Chandelure I called. Um, uh, who did I call the Chandelure again? No, I call that Tharja, yeah. And uh, the other one, the other two escape me. Uh, what what Pokemon games are you going to be doing for this Let's Play channel? Pretty much all, of, pretty much all the main series one, Gen one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, I probably do Colosseum because I have that and I really like it. Oh uh, yeah, just, Colosseum. Just other I, I'm, stuff. I'm looking forward to a Colosseum Let's Play because I I like I've wanted to play that game. For you know, I've wanted to replay that game for a while, but I can't. But I can't. I can't because uh, my disc is has been damaged with time, and it's yeah. not playing properly anymore. And oh, and I can't. Yeah. I, I, I. It's not that not, difficult to come by, though. I. I mean, it's a GameCube game, and it, I'd. I'd, yeah. I'd imagine it would be at least a little expensive. You know, over here it's like fifteen quid. Fifteen? Wow, that's, that's like not, twenty bucks. 
Huh. Okay. Um, oh. but um, yeah, Colosseum is admittedly I wasn't huge in it at first when I because I wasn't that experienced with Pokemon. Once you really know Pokemon, like the things to do, then yeah, I think you can really get into Colosseum and really appreciate yeah. it for what it is. Well, Colosseum has an issue with um, its uh, with uh, its pacing of what Pokemon it gives you. Oh yeah, because um, you're only limited to like fifty two Pokemon. Yeah, you're you're kind of limited with the the amount of stuff that you can actually use, and and the uh, you know and and when the game actually throws useful Pokemon at you, like it's either all at the beginning or all towards the end. So yeah, very like, true. But um, anyway, um, so that was the end of part four. I think this is yeah. So when we next meet, we're going to be starting getting into kind of plot territory and meeting the new Lord who we will who you know um we will join later on. And, and we'll be getting and we'll be getting a Discord because that the, the last time that the, the last thing time we used Skype. Yeah, uh, yeah. A moment of silence for Skype. Is it over? <laughs> it's over. Okay. Right. So once again, Zane, thank you very much for joining us. Or joining thank me. You for having Sorry, me on. Oh, it's not here. Uh, okay, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.